Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer, and I'm excited today to share with you my crafty gift guide. So this is a list of products ranging from $3 on up of things that I think any card maker would love to get. These aren't must-haves. These are all things that just make crafting easier or more fun. Now, I still will be doing my favorite crafty things list very soon, so stay tuned for that. This is just something fun that I thought would be helpful to many and something that you could share with a loved one for the holidays, birthday, or whatever. Again, these are just things that make crafting more fun. If you watch my videos, some of these products may be familiar to you, but there are also some new ones that I've been wanting to share for some time. Below, I will share links to all of these products, but I encourage you to go to my blog where there'll be links to the products along with videos I've done that will give you more information about the products. So let's get started in the first thing I'm really excited to share with you, and that is a new line of Share Handmade Kindness products. Folks have been asking me for this for some time, and I finally found an easy way to bring high quality products to you that have some special meaning. This is all about the Share Handmade Kindness message, which all makers can relate to. It doesn't have my name on it, just the message. This includes a bunch of different shirts, a large print you could hang in your house, a bunch of stickers, and more. These products are available at a new online store called Maker Means, which is a small business started by some wonderful folks. My favorite thing is that the shirts are super, super soft and high quality, and they're printed in a small print shop in Charlotte that trains and helps and employs folks who are really in need of a job. A great way to help the community also. Okay, next up is the Rabbit Hole Designs Cottontail Powder Tool. This has been an answer to years of searching for the right powder tool. I use this before I do any heat embossing. Now notice when you take off the cap, there are these soft bristles, lots of them. You can also slide the body of it to protect the bristles before you put the cap on. It's a very handy tool and there are refills for the powder available. Now this powder is a cosmetic grade powder made in the US and it doesn't have odor to it. That's one of the things I really like about this product. Rabbit Hole Designs also put in a ton of time to design this so that just the right amount of powder comes out, not too much. And you can easily wipe it away once you're done. Another tool that I have really been enjoying using and you've seen in videos, and I get a lot of questions about, are what I refer to as pressure tools for the Misty Stamping Tool or any kind of stamp positioner. I use two and both are wonderful. The first is this lightweight blue one. It comes in different colors and it's nice to hold in your hand. The other one is a little bit heavier and has a beautiful design to it. Both work great. These allow you to easily put pressure when stamping with your stamping tool. Now you can use your hand and rub around firmly, but this makes it much easier, especially for folks who have arthritis. I find that I use it a lot, especially on big background images with my stamping tool. I also use them for other things, which I'll show you in a moment. So normally I would stamp with my hand, but by using this tool, I'm able to get better pressure, which means better transfer of the ink from the stamp to the cardstock. By the way, the idea for this tool came from a crafter named Chuck over in the Gina K Designs Facebook group. That's a great group. If you haven't joined it, I recommend it. And now there are all sorts of these type of pressure tools available. There's another product that I've been using more and more and I find helpful when arranging die cuts or stamped images on my cards. That's the reverse tweezers. So these, when you squeeze them, they open. And when you let go, they close. So you can pick up your die cut easily after you put adhesive on it and place it exactly where you want. This has been helpful with tiny little things. It also is helpful to pinch on to your project any kind of bows or knots you create with string or ribbon, and then you can hold it there to dry. I find reverse tweezers after you get the hang of them to be very helpful and something that's definitely worth uh, investing in. There are two that I like, they're both great. Pink and Main has a pink version and Honey Bee has a black version. By the way, I'm going to rewind there. Notice that I used my Misty Pressure Tool to press down die cuts when I've glued them together. That's another use for that tool and I've been doing that a lot lately. 
Another tool that I find very helpful is to have a sticky mat. The one that I like comes with multiples in a package and you can cut it down so you end up with several sticky mats that you can use over time. I like to cut them down to fit inside of my Misty stamping tool. I can use them in the stamping tool and outside of it. When I use it in a stamping tool, I use it to hold cardstock in a certain spot as I stamp on it. If you get a new mat and it's a little too sticky, you can just press over it a few times with any kind of cloth or your hand, and that will remove a little bit of the stick. I find that it lasts for a long time, and you can also clean it if it starts to get too messy. I use this sticky mat most to hold a negative space of a die cut, so I can pop in the die cut and stamp right on it. This is helpful when you're doing a lot of stamping or if you are using a difficult layering stamp set. I also like to use my sticky mat outside of my stamping tool to arrange die cuts until I'm happy with the placement. Then I pick them all up together with some masking tape, put some glue on the back of it, and then add it to my card. I've demonstrated that many times in videos. So sticky mats are good for both stamping tools and on their own. And in case you haven't noticed, I do recommend getting some sort of stamp positioner. It is incredibly helpful with stamping. I like the Misty stamping tool. This is something that I recommend to any new stamper and advanced stampers alike. Another tool that works great with your stamping tool are clear alignment panels. These are available from Tailored Expressions. I've been using these off screen to test them out for some time and I really like them. There are several sizes available in the pack. This is how you use them. This one is sized to be A2, which is what I use most. I'm putting my A2 card into the corner of my Misty and then putting the alignment panel on top of it. This is very helpful in making sure you get things centered and straight. It's a huge help. So now I can take this long sentiment and use the lines to make sure I get it centered and straight. You just make sure you have the same number of columns on both sides to make sure it's centered and then follow the guidelines across to make sure it's straight. Another great thing about this is you can test your stamping first. So I'm closing the door on my stamping tool to pick up the greeting and I'm stamping first onto this alignment panel. And when I stamp it, I notice the end of my sentiment kind of curves up. It's not exactly straight. So now I can adjust that and try it again. I'm just gonna rotate the clear panel to test it out and I'll stamp it once again. Once I'm happy with the results, I can remove the alignment panel and stamp it directly onto my cardstock. I have been testing this off screen and found that this is very helpful in getting things straight and centered, especially when you really want to make sure that that focal point is in just the right spot. When you're done, you can easily wipe the panel clean and use it over and over. There are many different sizes in the set. They're nice and thick and something that you can use as a regular tool with your stamp positioner. Another product that I recommend is the Gina K Design Large Wreath Builder. This is the newer version that works in a regular stamping tool, such as the original Misty. It allows you to create a wreath shape or a build up a background of repetitive stamped images. The reason I recommend this tool is it is a great way to get new looks from your stamps, especially the small ones that often go overlooked. I'm just going to show you it briefly here. I have done a more complete video on this and I will provide a link here to that. This allows you to do different sizes of cardstock for different sizes of wreaths or backgrounds. This template also comes with a center piece that helps you get your positioning just right for the different images. Now this example here, I'm using a little leaf and I'll stamp it repeatedly in a circle. So you stamp it once, then shift your cardstock one little turn or one notch in the wreath builder. Then you'll stamp it again and shift it one more turn. And you'll keep doing this until you form a wreath in a circle on your background. Now you could stop here and have a wreath or you can build in more images towards the center and towards the outside to stamp the entire background. I have a playlist with the many ways I've used the wreath builder, but I do recommend this new and improved large wreath builder. It's very handy to have. 
Most of the products I'm sharing today are tools you can use over and over again, but I also recommend some embellishments. This is the Trinity Stamps Something New Pearls, and then the Trinity Stamps Bubble Blowout Gems. So the pearls are iridescent and white and really work well with a variety of products. The Bubble Blowout are clear iridescent smooth gems that again work with lots of things. In my videos, you've seen me use lots of different types of gems and pearls, but these are the two that I reach for most often. You can see the something new on the left and then the bubble blowout on the right. Another product that I highly recommend is the new Trinity Stamps Pick Up Stick. This is what I use to pick up the gems and put them on my card. I also use it to pick up small die cuts and other things while crafting. They had a different version for a while, but there were manufacturing problems, and this is the new version. On one side, there's a wax tip that is helpful in picking up small embellishments or die cuts. On the other side is a piercing tool, which can be used in many ways with crafting. Now I have tested this for a couple months off screen. I'm really happy with it. Keep in mind that the one end is a wax tip, not a rubber tip. So you wanna be gentle with it. Just a light touch to a small gem, die cut or embellishment will pick it up and then you can put it wherever you want on your project. So I put drops of glue onto some cardstock and I can easily pick up my gemstones and bring them over to my project and right into the adhesive. This tool is very handy for me. So if you like dealing with small die cuts or embellishments, you might wanna check this out. I find it very handy also that it's a two-in-one tool and there are caps for both ends to keep it safe. Trinity Stamps asked me to test this out for some time before they released it. Really happy with it, they just released it so you'll be seeing me use it in all my videos. Now let's go back to those gemstones, the pearls and the gemstones. I wanted to show you what it looks like when it dries. You can see how the white and the clear look on the white cardstock and then on the colored cardstock. So the bubble blowout you can actually see through and it picks up the color of whatever is behind it. One thing you can do with these is to change the color with alcohol ink or any type of permanent ink, such as Copic markers. So if you don't have a lot of colors of pearls or gems, you can easily color them with your Copics. This is very handy. Now, I have a bunch of colors because I use them so much on my cards, but if you don't use them much, this is a great way to just get the basics and change them to whatever color you need. By the way, if you're really into gems and pearls like I am, there is the Trinity Stamps Essentials Embellishment Collection. This is one that I asked them to put together all of my favorites. So you've got silver gems and pearls and much more all in one collection and it's at a discounted price. There are a lot of embellishments in here and it'll last you for quite a while. Another embellishment I use often and I recommend is the Trinity Stamps Oh My Stars Confetti. This is holographic star confetti. There are different size stars included and it's flat so it doesn't add much bulk to your project, but it adds a ton of sparkle. I've used these many times in videos and I keep reaching for them because the sparkle it adds. Let's share some more recommended tools. This is the Rabbit Hole Designs Biddy Blender Brush. It comes in this nice storage container. It also has a string on it so you can hang it up if that's a better storage system for you. I'll show you the option I use in a moment. I like this one because the brush itself is white and it's small, which lets you get into tight areas. It also has a great price point. So if you like to do inking over stencils, like this one, and you want to use multiple colors, this allows you to do small areas in certain colors. Now don't get me wrong, there are many incredible blending brushes out there, big ones, small ones, and everything in between, and all the ones the stamp companies have to offer are great. The reason I'm mentioning this one is it is a small blending brush that has a good price point and several different ways you can store it. Now the way I store mine is in a tool stand like this one. This particular one is from Tailored Expressions. I cut the string off the bottom and they just pop right in there. It's very handy to have. But keep in mind you can use this tool stand for other products such as your adhesive, your bone folders, your craft piercing tools and other things. It just kind of grips onto it and takes the shape and holds it there so it doesn't get lost on your desk. But again, I use mine for my bitty blending brushes and I can just keep this on a shelf and bring it to my desk when I need it. 
There are a few companies that offer tool stands. The first one I happen to see was the Tailored Expression, which is at the top. This one here that's black is from Honeybee. They're all a little bit different. The amount of give, those little grippy areas in the center give, vary from product to product, but they all work great with different crafting tools, and I'll link to them below. I do believe some of these tools are available in the makeup market, but I know nothing about makeup, and I appreciate these crafty companies doing the research for us and bringing us these tools to our industry. Now, if you have more traditional types of ink blending brushes like these with a handle, there is a stand available that I think is so handy to have. And I kind of changed it up and I wanted to share that with you. The stand that I like is from Gina K Designs. You can also get it from an Etsy shop. I'll link to both below. Now these will hold any of your traditional mitt ink blending tools like this one from Gina K or these from Simon Says Stamp. Any that have a handle will fit into these. Now what I do is I get a stand and I glue to the base of it a little Lazy Susan that allows it to spin, which is really handy to have on your desk. I used to just throw the brushes on my desk and later put them away, but then I would get ink on things and it would make a mess. Now I can pick up this little stand, bring it to my desk, spin it around for what I need, and then put it away right away. Now this Lazy Susan idea was again something that came out of the Gina K Facebook group. If you're not part of that Facebook group, you really need to join it, I'll put a link below. But let me show you, at the bottom of that white stand, which I'll link to, I glued a Lazy Susan. This Lazy Susan is inexpensive, and it I just put it on there with some double-sided tape from Lawn Fawn, just the kind of double-sided tape we use in crafting, and it has held up great. There are even inserts you can add to the inside so you can store more on the top, but I find I just like to use the base itself, and I have them for my different types of blending brushes. Now you don't need a lot of blending brushes. I have them because this is my job. I do like to keep some for my dye inks and some for my pigment and oxide inks, but you could always just clean them in between uses if that's better for you. But if you have a bunch of brushes, this stand is super handy. Okay, let's move on to a few different tools that work great together or separately. First, we have the Tim Holtz brayers. I find these brayers, which are available in two sizes, to be very good at applying paint or ink to your projects. I mostly use ink, which is what I have on hand, and this is great for it. You can pop off the rolling part so you can easily clean it, and it also has two little feet on it that you can rest it on your desk without getting ink everywhere. Another tool that I really like is the ink stand. It is really helpful in holding your ink pad still as you ink it with a blending brush, with a brayer, or with a stamp. I didn't realize how helpful it was until I tried it. It's available in different sizes for different types of ink pads, but I'm gonna demonstrate it today with just a basic dye ink. One of the big reasons I like the ink stand is because you can put your ink pad lid over on the other part, instead of getting that little mark of ink from the lid's edge on your projects, which I used to do all the time. It also holds it still while you use a brayer or a blending brush, as you can see me do here. You don't have to hold the ink pad every time. Now watch this, if the ink pad was just on my desk and I tried to use the brayer, it moves around, my fingers get inky, and I just find this is a great way for me to avoid getting ink where I don't want it. I have also heard that folks with arthritis really appreciate this because it holds the pad still as they're creating. You may know where I'm headed next, and that is to a gel press. I highly recommend investing in a gel press because it allows you to take the supplies you have, many of them, and use them in new and different ways. This is an inexpensive tool that you can use over and over in so many more ways than I have even discovered. I mostly use them with my stamping inks because that's what I have. If you have a stamping ink and some brayer, you can apply ink to your gel press, then add die cuts, embossing folders, stamped images, anything you want. Then press your cardstock onto it and you'll pick up this beautiful ink impression. Now I'm not really demonstrating it well here, but I do have a playlist of videos that I've done where I use basic stamping supplies along with the gel press to create unique looks. 
I am not an expert of the many ways you can use a gel press, but I'm constantly learning new things, and I'll be sharing many videos about this in 2022. I am always a fan of products or tools that allow me to get more out of the supplies I have. Okay, next up we have the Waffle Flower Stencil Mat. This is the mini version. There is also a larger version. There's a little corner where you can put your cardstock, which is helpful. There are a couple ways I like to use this mini stencil mat. It holds your paper still as you do your blending, so you don't have to worry about it sliding around or having to tape it down. You don't even have to hold it as you see me do here. You can knock the excess ink off of your blending brush onto the mat and then pick up that extra ink and apply it where you want it later. This is helpful in making sure you get a nice blend. Another reason I really like the stencil mat is because of that little corner, you can put your cardstock there and then put each layering stencil in the same position and you know the lineup each time. I have this Brutus Monroe stencil set that I'm quickly going to demonstrate. If I put my cardstock right into that little corner, I can put my first stencil into the same corner. I'll apply my ink to it, and then I can come in with the second stencil and put it in the exact same corner, and I know it'll line up every time. This mat is made of silicone, so it is heat resistant, and it cleans nicely. Some inks will stain it, but you don't have to worry about the ink transferring to something else after it's been cleaned. I find that I do most of my stenciling on this stencil mat. It's super handy. Next, let's talk about adhesives. Now, I have tried every adhesive there is, and I've come down to two liquid adhesives that I like for different uses. Now, my favorite is the Gina K Connect. I have used this for years. I like that it's a small bottle that is easy to squeeze and easy on the hand. I also know that I can trust it. A little bit of this will hold just about anything, so I don't have to worry about anything coming off. I can squeeze this bottle and tiny amounts will come out. I could do a long line. I could squeeze it harder and get bigger dots or bigger lines. I use this to attach almost everything on my cards. Another option that I like is the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. I find I reach for this when I need a tiny amount of glue for tiny die cuts or intricate little stamped images. You can see it will put down tiny amounts. It does hold well, and I'm able to use it for other things, but I like that I can easily squeeze the Connect glue. With the Connect, I've never had problems with it clogging if you put the cap on right away. With this one, you really need to put the cap on right away so the precision tip doesn't get clogged. So when you get a bottle, it comes like this, and it also comes with different tips you can put on top. I put on the precision tip. There are little instructions that come with it, and you can follow that, but it's easy to do. I put on the precision tip, but I'm always certain to close the precision tip after I'm done using it right away. This will prevent clogging. The way I close off the tip is this rubber stopper. If you get the Barely Art glue, be sure to get this inexpensive little rubber stopper that attaches around the neck of the glue, and you can just fold it over and put it on the top. If I put that on right away, I never have clogging issues. It also kind of hangs off as you're creating. You can use a rubber band to keep it from flopping around, but I just work with it as is so that I can put it on right away when I'm done using. So in summary, I use the Gina K Connect for almost everything, but I use the Barely Art for fine, intricate things. And I've never had any problems with my cardstock warping because I use a heavy weight cardstock with it. Another type of adhesive that I find very handy to have is the Altenew double-sided adhesive sheets. I've tried many adhesive sheets in the past and I like this one because it holds well and it die cuts beautifully. So what I like to do is put this on the back of a piece of cardstock, basically turning my cardstock into a sticker. Then I can die cut with it and I'll end up with a die cut that has a sticker backing. This is very helpful when you have super intricate die cuts and don't want to have to deal with the liquid adhesive with those die cuts. Another benefit is you can put this where you want it and if you change your mind, you can easily lift it off and move it. But once you're happy with the position, just use a bone folder or something else to press it into place and it'll hold wonderfully. Another product that I find very helpful is Easy C Tape. I've used this for a long time in videos now, and I prefer this over different types of masking tape 
or washi tape when holding a die in place when you're running it through a die cut machine. I find this tape will remove easily after you're done die cutting without damaging the paper. There are many different colors and what I like to do is pop them out of the temporary tape dispenser and put them into a true tape dispenser, making it much easier to use when you're crafting. I also find that I'm able to reuse these pieces a few times so that there's less waste. Another option for a tape when crafting is the new all to new satin masking tape. This is a wider tape and you can see there's much more on a roll. It tears easily and it's very thin, thinner than most masking tapes. This is great if you're doing any kind of masking or taping a paper down. It also works well if you tear it into little pieces to use to hold dies in place. I have been experimenting with this for a few weeks now and I'm happy with it and it's another great option to use for tape in your crafting. Another tool that you've probably seen me use a lot in videos is the Paper Artsy Sanding Block. There are multiples that come in a pack and they're inexpensive and will last you for a while. This has just the right amount of grit on it to use with your paper. You could use sandpaper, but this is very handy. So say you get ink where you don't want it. So see this pink here? I didn't want that there. If you have a little bit amount of ink, you can use this to sand that ink away. You can also use a sanding block to sand any rough edges when you fold cardstock or any other little ink mishaps that you might have like these. Notice that that ink is gone. So these sanding tools will last you for a while and are super handy. Next we have die cutters. I get a lot of questions about this, about what you can do to cut your dies apart when they come connected. I recommend using a good fine tip die cutter and I will link to a couple options below. Now, I think it's really important to use them in the correct way. So here I have this Lawn Fawn background die that has other dies included in the middle, which is a great value. But you wanna cut those little dies apart. Using a good die cutter like the one I'm using here is very important. This allows you to get into those nooks and crannies and cut really close to the die so there aren't sharp edges. However, when there are little sharp edges sticking off, this is what I like to do. I clamp it with the die cutters and then I just fold back and forth with the die, kind of wiggle back and forth instead of squeezing the die cutters firmly. This will prevent the little piece of die, that little wiry piece from flying across the room. So watch, I will clamp very close to the die, hold it over a baby wipe and just go back and forth a little bit, not squeezing too hard. And that little piece will end up in the baby wipe instead of flying across the room. If you're looking for a fun and different way to create, I recommend the Pear Blossom Press Easy Lights. These allow you to add light up features to your cards without having to create any kind of circuits. They're super easy to do. I've done a video showing how to use them. I'll link to it up in the top right. But if you're looking for something fun and different, these definitely fit the bill. One product that I reach for often, over and over, are the Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Strips. These are pre-printed heavyweight cards. They're available with white with black printing and black with white printing in many different themes and many different styles. I use these a lot when I need something quick to add to a card. And better yet, the printing on this is done with a laser jet printer, so you're able to do foiling with it using deco foil. So you can even make these sparkly if you want. I encourage you to look at the many different types of sentiment strips available. They are super easy to add to your cards and very inexpensive. I keep mine organized in stamp pockets with the name of the sentiment strips right across the top so I can find whatever sentiment I need for a card. I thought I'd show you a trick on how I cut out exactly the sentiment I want, making sure it's nice and even. So I highlighted one of the sentiments just so you could see it easily. I take a large piece of scrap cardstock and I put it into my trimmer right up against the blade. I really like this Tim Holtz trimmer. I then take my sentiment strip sheet and I slide it underneath that cardstock so that the edge of the cardstock is where I want it to cut right above my sentiment. You can see the yellow sentiment underneath there. When that edge of that cardstock is lined up, I can close the blade of my trimmer and I know it'll cut just where I want it to be because I place that cardstock right against the edge of the blade. 
So now we have one side cut nicely. We need to do the same thing on the other side. So I'll line up my cardstock again, making sure the edge of the cardstock is lined up with the blade. Then I will take my sentiment strip panel, slide it underneath, making sure that I have the edge of that blue cardstock lined up underneath the sentiment that I want. I will then drop the blade and there we have our sentiment. We can then cut off on the left and the right of this and it's ready to go. This is a trick that works with stamp sentiment strips also, but is really handy with these pre-printed sentiments. Now I tried to keep most of the products I talked about in this gift guide at a lower price point, but there are a couple at a higher price point that I really think are worth considering if you're interested. And one is a hot foil machine. This is the Spellbinders Glimmer machine, the one that I use the most because it works with the Spellbinders die cut machine. There are many different types of hot foil machines out there. You need to find the one that works with whatever die cut machine you have. Now I am going to very quickly demonstrate how the hot foil machine works here, but I will link to a playlist up here on the top right that goes into much more information about the foiling process. You need hot foil plates for this or any type of die will even foil. You also need some hot foil that comes in a roll like this glimmer hot foil. And then you use the machine according to the instructions. Again, I demonstrate that in many videos. I'll link to it up here. You push the timer button and that warms up your hot foil plate, your foil, and your cardstock to allow it to transfer. Once the timer is done flashing, you take out the platform and everything and run it through your Spellbinders die cut machine or whatever die cut machine goes with your hot foil machine. This applies the pressure. So your hot foil machine applies the heat, the die cut machine provides the pressure, and then when you remove it, you have a beautiful, smooth, hot foiled image. Again, you can use this with hot foil plates as I'm demonstrating here, but you can also use these with your dies to get thin line images. By the way, these extra products like these hot foil plates and dies, I will have linked in my blog and in my YouTube description below if you're interested in what they are. But I find that more and more companies are coming out with hot foil plates. So I find it's a better investment now to get a hot foil machine than before because there are so many more ways to use them. If you do have a hot foil machine, I recommend the Pink Fresh Studio Solid Hot Foil Plate. This allows you to use your negative space foil, like the one you see on the right, and do foiling with that. There are other ways to do this type of foiling, like say with the back of a large foil plate, but I find this hot foil plate really works much better than anything else and is worth the investment so you don't have the waste of the negative space. I have a video showing how to do that and I'll link to it up here in the top right. Another higher price point item that I recommend is the new Spellbinders exclusive limited time Aqua Platinum 6 die cut machine. This is such a beauty. It's just like the white Platinum 6 die cut machine, but in a beautiful color and print and is available for a short amount of time. If you have a regular Platinum 6, you definitely don't need this. But if you're looking for a new die cut machine, this type of Spellbinders machine has never failed me. It also ha comes with these beautiful aqua glitter plates, which are just super fun. I find that these plates do not warp, and I find that they cut beautifully. This machine also works great with the glimmer machine I just showed you and many of our favorite techniques. If you do, for some reason, get some warping with your plates, which I haven't had happen, you can do my boiling water trick with the plates, which I'll link to on the top right here. Again, this is a great machine, customer service is great, and I've never had troubles with it. This may surprise you, but another tool that I recommend for crafters is a laminator. Now there are fun techniques you can do with this on your card. You can even do some foiling with it. However, I use this a lot for organization. What I like to do is cut pieces of cardstock in any colors I want. You can even print on the cardstock. Then run it through my laminator in a laminating pouch like this. This laminates it, makes it strong, and makes for a great divider for my stamps, dies, and more. There are a lot of great laminators out there. If you have one you like, that's great. I found that this Royal Sovereign has held up well over the years. 
So here I'm making a stamp company divider. So I cut some cardstock that I like and I just kind of rounded the corners there and I'm putting it into a laminating pouch. I could put another piece over there, but I'm just demonstrating for the video. I run that through my laminator and it provides heat and squishes it so that that cardstock has the lamination around it and it'll hold up over time and is much stronger. I will use my scissors to cut the rounded corners so they're not sharp and then I can print a label to put at the top and this is the perfect stamp divider. There are a few inks I wanted to put on this list. Now there are a lot of great inks out there, but there are just a few I thought I would highlight. One is the Ink on 3 Shark Tooth White Pigment Ink. This ink pad comes very juicy, is great for stamping in white, ink blending in white, and more. I've used this a lot in videos. Now there are a lot of great white pigment inks out there, but I find this one comes very juicy and lasts me a long time. As for a black ink pad, there are a lot of great ones, but there is one that is a great all around black ink and that is the Gina K Designs Obsidian Black Amalgam Ink. The reason I suggest this black ink is it can be used with pretty much anything. You can stamp sentiments with it. You can do basic stamping with it. You can watercolor with it. You can ink blend over it. You can use your Copic markers. You can use pretty much anything with this ink and it won't bleed. If you're doing watercolor or ink blending or anything like that, I do recommend just heat setting it for a moment to make sure that it's good and dry before doing any of your coloring. But this is one that you can reach for for anything and it takes the question out of what type of ink to use. I do have three colored inks I wanted to mention because they're unique. These inks are part of the Simons' Stamp Blue Positively Saturated Ink Line. They caught my eye because there are three true blues, and I don't have many true blue inks in my collection. These are a foam type dye ink pad, which is becoming more and more popular. But what I really liked about these three in particular is the color. You have a light, medium, and darker blue. They're not too turquoise. They're not too like powdery blue. They're just true blues. And if you get excited about inks like I do, I wanted to share this with you because they are such beautiful colors that fill in a hole in my ink collection. Now I feel like in a gift guide, it's fun to include some specialty card stocks, things you might not normally get. One would be the Tim Holtz Black Matte Alcohol Ink Cardstock. This is fun to use with alcohol ink, but it also is a very smooth, super dark black cardstock. That's it on the left, and that's a regular black cardstock on the right. It has almost like a suede feel to it, and it's beautiful for black die cut words or for white heat embossing little black sentiment strips. I use this mostly for those little things, for those focal points, not for creating large black backgrounds. So this is a specialty cardstock that I keep in a special place and I use for those focal points. If you haven't tried this cardstock, you need to see it in person. It is absolutely beautiful. Another fun black cardstock is the Aaron Lee Creative Black Glossy Cardstock. This has a white core and back, but it's black and shiny on the front. So if you want to die cut from this, you'll have a shiny black die cut that will stand out. No need to put glossy accents on it. This has the shine built in. You can also create a note card from it because it has a white core and back. I've used that cardstock a lot in videos, and another I've used a lot is this holographic cardstock from Aaron Lee Creative. This also has a white core and white back, so you can make a note card from it. The nice thing about holographic cardstock is it picks up whatever colors around it, so it seems to work with everything. You can also die cut small little die cuts from it, and these kind of turn into fun embellishments that provide the shine that gems and pearls do without the bulk. I often like to die cut them from star die cuts or heart die cuts, as you see here. Holographic cardstock is really popular right now. You can even use your alcohol inks on it and your Copic markers. 
Now, there are a lot of silver and gold metallic cardstocks out there. I've tried so many, and I'm excited to finally settle on two that I like the most. These are the Simonses Stamp Matte Silver and Matte Gold cardstocks. They are white core and white back, so you can make a note card from them. They have shine to them, but they're not like a mirror. They're not too shiny. They have a matte feel to them. They are thick, heavyweight, and die cut beautifully. So these are now my go-to, and I will be using these throughout the year anytime I need any kind of metallic accent on my cards. Another specialty cardstock you may have noticed me use a lot in videos lately is the Memory Box Majestic Hues Glitter Paper Pad. Now there are a bunch of glitter papers in here. They're all basic colors. You have silver, gold, black, white, navy. You have different shades of gold. There's even a champagne, which happens to be my favorite. There's copper, there's bronze. There are 12 different types of kind of more essential glitter papers in here. And there's two of each. I like these because of the selection of, of glitter papers. They die cut very easily and the glitters don't rub off. So if you're looking for kind of an essentials pad, this is a good option. I was very excited when Simon Says Stamp came out with their new acetate sheets. I like these particular sheets because they are very clear, very thick, and they are heat resistant. I've used many different types of acetate in the past for my card making, heat embossing, and more. This is a great option because it's a full size, so you can score it and fold it and turn it into a clear note card. You can also heat emboss on it and it will not warp. So having an acetate that's able to be heat resistant is a real bonus. Okay, let's wrap up this list with some inexpensive tools that you can use often in crafting. The first is the black glaze pen. I like to use this to outline my images so they stand out a bit more, but I mostly like it to make the eyes of my critters stand out. This goes on with a little bit of dimension and a lot of shine. So here you can see what it looks like wet. You can see those little dots have kind of a domed look to them. Then when you give it a little bit of time to dry, it still keeps that shape and it keeps that shine. I just find that it's a nice, easy accent on my cards. Now a tool that I use a lot, but I don't talk much about is a good mechanical pencil. I'll link to the one that I like. I like the fine tip of this and the really good eraser that comes on the end. You can see there's a lot of eraser there also, it'll last for a while. You just push a button on the side and the lead comes out. I use this a lot to find the center points on my cards and I find that it erases very easily. I also do recommend that T-Roller. I've talked about it on many of my lists for many years. It's a very inexpensive tool that allows you to find your center point and create a straight line easily. So between the T-Roller and my good mechanical pencil and eraser, I'm able to plan out my crafting better and get better results every time. So there you have it, my 2021 gift guide. These are just some tools and products that I think are fun for card makers and also helpful. If you are interested in them, I have them linked below in my YouTube description to multiple sources. But if you click to my blog, there's a lot more information there, very easy to follow. And I link to videos where I demonstrate the different tools mentioned. And remember, the different tools that I talk about may be helpful for some, but not others. So just look around at what may appeal to you, and hopefully you'll find something you learn from. Thank you for spending this time with me. At the end here, I'll link to a couple other related videos. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you soon.